Hello again. This is uh, Anza Langer and uh, doing my second video here. And this one will also be on a classic 90s mountain bike that I have. Although videos to come will be uh, uh, more uh, about other things like backpacking, hiking, survival, things like that. So why don't we get into it today. Um, I'm starting on doing videos on my bikes first because uh, I'm trying to get experience in doing these videos. And so feedback's important. Um, speaking of feedback, got lots of feedback about clamping the frame. So I have not done that here. I've done the seat post. Advice taken. Thank you. And the second one, um, I know this is a classic 90s page. Um, but... Uh, I ride my bikes and sometimes using original parts is not always feasible so um, it is what it is I hope you can appreciate that I'm still riding these things um, instead of just making them you know parking them and making them display pieces so why don't we get started so this is I believe a 95 maybe a 96 GT Karakaram it originally, I believe, came with a rigid fork, but when I got the bike, someone had a mid to late 90s Manitou uh, coil oil fork on it. I have uh, upgraded that to a 2017 RockShox um, Recon TK Silver uh, 30 Solo Air Fork. So we'll get into that in a minute. So the frame is 19 and a half inches. It is chromoly, and it is part of uh, the frame design when GT used to do what they called the groove tube, where the cables would actually run up into that little butted groove in the, in the top tube there. All right, let's get started. So a couple original parts still on the bike, the frame, obviously. Uh, we're going to come over here. Um, I have made this, just so you know, in 8-speed. So I have a eight in the back, one in the front with a race face bash guard. A lot of rocks and roots around here. And, but it does have the original shifter. Um, I have been tra having trouble with this shifter. Um, install new cables. I've had the bike shop rebuild it a couple of times. It's just getting old and the parts inside are wearing out. So this is something that's probably going to be replaced fairly soon. Of course, I took the one off the other side because it's not needed. All right. Uh, another original part on the bike will be the Tioga Alchemy headset. And I did replace all the bearings in it. And it, when I got it, it came without a top cap. So I just threw, I had an old King Creek top cap uh, laying in my toolbox. Uh, so I just threw it on there. And the reason for that is because on my other bikes I have custom top caps. Uh, let's just take a quick uh, off-topic thing here. So as you can see, like on my 29-inch Voodoo here, I've got a uh, Star Trek top cap. Doing a little bit of sci-fi there. And the same on my Classic, which I just posted pictures of. Um, my 98 GTSTS. I have... Uh, the Darth Vader Luke Skywalker battle from uh, Empire Strikes Back. And there we go. So that's why I got all these extra top caps laying around because I take off the originals and throw these on there. Okay, so back to the topic at hand. Sorry about that. All right, so we left off with, oh yeah, the Tioga Alchemy headset. The profile design stem is new, as are the... You can't see the brand name because it's black on black. Um, but they're ordered from like uh, uh, Nash Bar, the, the bike place. They're just their stock in-house riser bars. Give me a little extra width there. Um, I've gone with my favorite and most comfortable grips ever, the Race Face Good and Evils. Love those things. Feel nice. Grip good. Um, don't worry about that on there. That's nothing special. That's just for my camera. And let's see, what else? Okay, so, um, originally when I got it, it had uh, cheap Tektro um, 
brake levers. I have switched those out for some LX brake levers that I've had uh, had laying around in my parts bin. But then I went ahead and I bought new old stock um, XTV brakes. I decided not to switch this to disc. Um, the reason being was uh, mostly cost and then having to get the right adapters and all that kind of stuff. It was just easier to get myself a real high-end set of V-brakes. And, you know, I've had this out in the mud, as you can tell from the tires. And um, the V-brakes work fine. I, I've got no, no complaints or issues there. I don't race anymore, so I don't need the high performance of disc brakes on every bike that I have. Um, so that was the reasoning behind that. And they look sharp, too. Um, I like the black, the flat black, and I... I like uh, I like how they're styled and designed there. So those are the brakes. Let's get back down to the shock. So like I said, I believe this bike originally came with a rigid uh, fork, but whoever owned it replaced it uh, with a Manitou. I can't remember which model, but it was a coil oil fork, and it was just spongy as all get up. So I went ahead and bought a 2017. Uh, RockShox uh, TK30 Silver Air Fork. Um, it's one of the Solo Airs, not the Dual Air like the Reba SL on my 29er. Um, looks great. Had it out on a couple muddy rides. All I did was give it a good wipe down and it looks brand new. So, alright. There we go. So for the drivetrain, as I said, I went down to one cog in the front. I wanted to make it just a simple bike to ride. Um, I used a set of XT cranks and put a race face uh, bash guard on there. A lot of roots and stuff where I'm at. Didn't want to, you know, bang up and twist a lot. Um, went with the Time XC. Funny story about these uh, six cross-country pedals. So originally what I was going to do to keep a little bit of originality, this is funny, is I went on eBay and found a pair from the 90s of the Time Carbon World Championship pedals. And generally you can pick those up for, you know, like 80 to 100 bucks in like new condition. Well, you had these newbies on eBay and they were getting overly excited. The guy that won the bid paid over $200. Um, and I, I found them at other places for about a hundred, but while I was looking, I came across these brand new clearance sale, got them for less than 60 bucks for the pair. So I just said, you know what, I'm just going to jump on that. So that's the story behind the pedals. <laughs> anyway, the chain, the chain is, I can't remember. It's a mid-level chain. It's not the high end, but it's not the low garbage end either. Um, but I can't remember the brand name of that that I bought. And then we moved to the rear derailleur. Another item I had in my parts bin laying around, an XT rear derailleur. So I got that on there. And that pretty much takes care of the drivetrain. Now, it is a core seat post. I don't know how original or the age of it. But I know you guys remember core. They were big in the 90s, K-O-R-E. You can't see the logo because I got it clamped right now. And to keep some of the originality, I've got one of the Wilderness Trail Bikes SST seats. Now, back in the day, this was my favorite saddle. I love the embroidered logo on the top of the seat. That was fucking awesome. Oh, sorry, excuse my language. Hope didn't offend nobody. I'm just saying it was awesome. And so um, I actually found this one on eBay at a pretty good price and uh, had, to, had to have it sent to me. Awesome, awesome. Okay, moving on. So as you can see the tires, I've gone with the 2.1 uh, Wilderness Trail Bike Velociraptors on the front and rear. And for wheels, um, the wheels that came with it were just, they were Mavic wheels, but they were just destroyed. So before anybody comments anything on this, the only reason why I bought these wheels is because they were on a 70% uh, off clearance sale and it was a really good deal and I got a buddy that rides these and other than these cool looking D 
decals on the side wearing off of his. Um, the wheels are strong and true and hold up to everything he throws at them. So I went ahead and got these. Uh, there we go. And they are the Zero Lights limited edition. I don't know what makes them limited. They were in the clearance bin on the bike website. So, but I got to say, I mean, these are some thick, beefy looking spokes. They've held up well. Um, I have had no issues with them getting out of true. And um, I've jumped off of picnic tables with this bike. So, you know, um, yeah, they're, they're holding up really well. So, yeah, the wheels are new. Um, I think they look kind of sharp with the the red, black, and white. Um, kind of, kind of go with the frame a little bit. So, you know, it gives a little, gives a little bit of look. Um, this decal was on the bike. If anybody can tell me what that is, I was thinking it has something to do with a Red Hot Chili Peppers album or something. I don't know. But that was on the bike. I didn't bother taking it off. All right. Let's move around to the front here. So I've also got Wilderness Trail Bike Skewers on the front and rear. And, oh, the hubs. Well, the hubs, I haven't heard much about them, but they're the stock hubs that come with these wheels. I haven't had any issues with them yet, and I've been through some wet, muddy stuff. I live in the Pacific Northwest, so it's always, even on days when it's been sunny and 70 for like a week, you can find places in the woods that are sheltered from the sun that it's still thick, goopy, pudding like mud. And I uh, haven't had any issues with dirt getting in the, in, the, in the hubs at all or causing me any problems. All right, so that's it. 95, maybe 96 Karaka Ram. I don't know if there's an expert out there on GT frames. Maybe you can tell me what year. There we go. And uh, thanks for watching my second video. Again, feedback's important. As I told you at the beginning of the video, I listened to the feedback and made corrections accordingly, like not clamping the frame and addressing, you know, the purists out there that would never put anything but original parts on um, by saying that, yes, I ride my bikes. And uh, so sometimes using original parts just isn't feasible. So, this is my second video. I did promise videos on other things, um, but right now I'm just trying to practice, so I'm going to do videos on my bikes. I um, still have a few here in the garage. I got some in storage. There's the Cannondale we recently did a video on. Voodoo 29 is not a classic bike, but man, is it fun. But uh, some of you may have seen the pictures I posted of the GT STS, the 98. And uh, all the fun I'm having on her. Get a video down on her soon. And then eventually we'll break into the storage unit and pull out some of the classic bikes that are still all original. Uh, one of which, in case any of you are a uh, Schwinn person, I actually have, in mint condition, never ridden, a uh, 1994 Impact Team Pro edition. Um, mountain bike and the story on that was this guy's father bought it I think it was 94 it might have been earlier than that it might have been a 92 but the guy's um, father bought the bike brand new from the bike store rode it once around his driveway fell and broke his hip and then it sat in the garage until I bought it no one's ever ridden it since all the parts are original everything that's on the bike came from the bike shop with it back in the 90s so i'll be doing a video on that too for anyone uh who's interested there might be a while though and like i said look forward to other videos i'm going to be taking some backpacking trips um obviously it's not the season for snowshoeing but uh going to be doing some other outdoor adventure stuff i do teach primitive survival skills for wilderness companies so i might do a few work videos related to that that you guys might be able to look forward to so that's my uh, video for today thank you for watching 
and uh, I hope you all enjoy it.